सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो सो दिस वीडियो इज फॉर दोज फॉर हैविंग बैकलॉग्स फॉर द सब्जेक्ट डिजिटल सिस्टम डिजाइन यूजिंग वेरी लॉग दैट इज डी एस डी ओके द सब्जेक्ट कोड वॉज बी ई सी थ्री जीरो टू ओके सो दिस इज फॉर दोज ओके दोज आर हैविंग द बैकलॉग्स दिस इज वन सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट पासिंग पैकेज क्वेश्चन आई एम गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड इट टू यू ऑल सो बिफोर गोइंग टू द एग्जाम रीड दिस क्वेश्चन सो आई वुड गारंटी यू दैट यू विल पास ओके एंड ऑल्सो दोज who who have failed who are having backlogs and yet they are not able to clear the subject you have a good news guys you can you can write the make up exam in the next sem okay the vtu has uh, given the permission they have already said, uh, spread the notice that uh, those who are having the backlogs and they are not yet able to clear it they can take that backlog with them in the next sem also for the next year okay but the thing is that you should be clearing it uh, till uh, when when you reach fourth year because uh, when you reach fourth year you should be clearing all the backlogs okay then otherwise you won't be eligible okay so who and all are having the backlogs for second sem third sem so uh, again after the if you are after writing these exams again you think that you are going to fail so those backlog students are uh, eligible to enter in the next sem okay yeah so this was one notice regarding to vtu hope uh, or uh, you might be getting beneficial news okay so here the first important topic related to combinational logic circuit this is very very important and multiple times repeated question that is to uh, know the definition of combinational logic circuit okay it circuit how it works okay so this is the definition here and one question related to design a combinational logic circuit with the condition they would be giving that four inputs okay and majority of the four inputs is true okay for that we need to be designing a logical uh, combinational logic circuit okay so related to this one question would be asked combinational logic circuit so one more important question is related to canonical form sop and pos okay so these are some of the example to conversion of uh, sum of product into product of sum this question is fixed here these kind of questions would be asked okay the uh, conversion of uh, product of sum to sum of product the canonical uh, conversions okay these things you need to be learning the canonical form conversions so please note it down and also some questions related to k map it is fixed okay those are having very log as backlog the one fixed question is related to k map okay they would be giving the value of k map here okay and whatever the value they have mentioned okay those values you need to be storing it in the uh, k map okay and their their value should be equal to 1 rest all the things should be equal to 0 and uh, we need to be grouping the values okay hope you might be knowing this okay the grouping part so we need to be starting with the majority groups okay that is group of 8 that is octant okay if uh, the group of 8s are not possible we need to be mentioning it uh, doing a group of 4 okay group of 4 is possible even when the value of 1 is at the corner so in this case the values of 1 are at the corner so this four uh, values of one would be a single group okay and here we have one more value for group of four okay then uh, taking that uh, substituting the value of 00011011 and declaring it in variables a b c d then uh, we would be getting the equations okay so hope you might be knowing this so again go through this uh, canonical for uh, form and uh, karnoff map that is k map expansion so this one question is fixed okay from k map and one more question is it is fixed for related to quinn mcclosky method okay so again uh, whatever quinn mcclosky method rule is there first we need to be making a groups of 0 1 2 3 similarly min terms we need to be writing it it's uh, in binary form uh, i represent those min terms okay then uh, again split it into two groups okay min terms of two groups three groups and uh, last we need to be doing the pi terms decimal min terms calculation and compare the two min terms whatever we get uh, in the group of four as common terms those two we need to be writing it and if you want you can cross check this by using the k map as well okay so this one question is very important related to quinn and mcclosky method so now let's get to module 2 some of the important concepts related to module 2 that is logic design using uh, msi components so one question is fixed and multiple times repeated that is a carry look ahead adder okay the in this module the important question is carry look ahead adder okay so here the values of sum and carry we need to be representing as as from generator and propagator okay generator means product of two values propagator means sum of two values uh, group it in the equation and uh, we need to be checking for different values of i i is equal to 0 1 2 and 3 what would be the values of carry c1 c2 c3 c4 and the general formula we need to be writing it and this is the carry look ahead network here okay 
so this is the input term output c in c n and c out okay so here these are the two bits that is x not y not x not y not and c not okay so this is the propagator this is the generator and the s not is the carry out it would be coming outside okay so this is the simple carry look ahead network and this is the logic diagram where this is the first input second input and this is the carry okay so here we are representing the propagator in terms of or gate xi plus yi and we are representing a generator in terms of and gate okay and here if we apply xi xor yi xor zi we would be getting the term that is si okay so this is very very one important question that is carry look ahead adder okay so please note it down so for module 3 one question one question is fixed that is implementing the value of fxyz using a 4 is to 1 mux okay or the value whatever we get we need to be substituting in the k map and we need to be solving it this question is very important implement using 4 is to 1 mux so this question would be asked and from module 3 a fixed question okay that is we need to be writing the characteristic equations for all the four kinds of flip flops that is sr flip flop jk flip flop t flip flop and d flip flop this question is multiple times repeated and it is a fixed question okay we need to be writing the characteristic equation for all the four flip flops this is a fixed question this you need to be learning okay this is very important so first thing sr flip flop its function table next state table draw the k map using those two tables okay same thing whatever equation we get for d flip flop t flip flop and jk flip flop we need to be writing it okay this question is fixed using uh, the characteristic equation of all the four flip flops so please study this and also one question related to universal shift register it is again very fixed question okay with the we need to be drawing the simple block using uniform universal sh shift register so here they use the d flip flops four d flip flops for four inputs for four inputs IA, IB, IC, ID and it produces four outputs that is QA, QB, QC, QD again we are using 4 is to 1 mux 4, 4 is to 1 mux you know in, in case of universal shift register okay this is the clear pin and this is the clock pin which we are taking it from the D flip flops okay and this is the serial input right shift and here the, from I2 of the fourth 4 is to 1 mux it is the serial input left shift okay so this one uh, universal shift register block is very important then consider the select lines S1, S0, okay, then the operation of register, whenever S1, S0 value is 0, 0, it is at hold, 0, 1, it is right shift, 1, 0, it is left shift, that is I2 get selected, so here in this case I0 get selected, I1 and 1, 1, it is I3 would be getting selected and it is the parallel load, okay, yeah, so this was one important question related to universal shift register. So one more important question uh, related to one T flip flop that is we need to be designing a 4 bit ripple counter okay they would be mentioning how many bit ripple counter we need to be doing okay so if they asked 4 bit ripple counter 4 blocks of T flip flop we need to be doing from uh, C we will be taking one count pulse okay that is a count enable for all the uh, it is common for all the flip flops okay and these are the 4 uh, outputs which are generating Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3 and this is the truth table for you need to be writing all the 16 bits to represent a 4 bit ripple counter so this is one fixed question related to 4 bit ripple counter and this is very important and fixed question related to synchronous counter okay we need to be designing the synchronous counter with where they would be giving the values of counting sequence okay so we need to be um, uh, designing the synchronous counter for they would be mentioning which flip flop and we need to be doing the synchronous counter design by first taking say in this case i have taken the jk flip flop here jk flip flop sequence function table and final truth table of present state and next state okay draw this okay compare the values from the counting sequence whatever 0 2 3 6 5 1 okay then flip flop outputs that is one is for j1 k1 j2 k2 j3 k3 since uh, they have uh, mentioned uh, using uh, the counting sequence as a uh, till uh, 6 only it is the highest value so it consists of only uh, 3 bits okay since we don't have the values greater than 7 so till 7 it consists of only 3 bits so that's why we are having 3 inputs and 3 outputs for jk flip flop and all for all those 6 counting sequence separately we, you need to be drawing the 6 k maps here okay so please uh, note this k maps down okay and finally we need to be connecting whatever the terms for j1 k1 j2 k2 and j3 k3 whatever answer you got in the same way draw the blocks of jk flip flop and here j1 the answer is q2 and q3 so what you need to be doing is 
So separately draw one block for Q1, Q1 bar, Q2, Q2 bar, Q3, Q3 bar and J1 and K1 take the inputs. So J1, for J1 the answer is Q2, Q3 we need to be taking Q2, Q3 means it is the AND operation, it is the multiplication so you need to be using one AND gate and from Q2 and Q3 take one input, connect it to an AND gate and give this output to J1. Okay, similarly for all of them you need to be doing, yeah, so in this way you need to be building the block for synchronous counter and from fourth module the important uh, question is introduction to Verilog the module name and from fourth module one question related to this bit sequence the addition subtraction multiplication division and set sequence and all they would be asking okay so please note it down and they would be asking uh, the question related to types of operators okay that is logical operator bitwise, bitwise operator reduction operators relational operators okay all the types of operators you need to be writing it explaining it okay arithmetic operators so how many arithmetic operators are there mention it all then shift and rotate operators okay and some of the important data types that is nets registers vector integer real parameters and arrays so please mention it as well and from module 5 all the sequential sequential statements you need to be once uh, uh, brushing up with that is if statement else if statement okay then case statements okay then uh, loop statements for loop while loop do while loop all of them make a note of all the loops then repeat statement forever statements okay this is very important and uh, one program related to 2 is to 1 max using else if statement they would be asking okay so this is one fixed question so please uh, note it down 2 is to 1 max using else if statement this is uh, they would be asking it fixed okay note it down and one more question is we need to be writing a Verilog program using the behavioral description of dlatch using if else statement again this code is important so please note this code also down it's very very important and one question is fixed from this module 5 which you need to be learning before going that is Verilog structural description we need to be writing a Verilog program for 3 bit ripple carry adder using full adder okay 3 bit ripple carry adder so we need to be using 3 full adders to make this block of sum and carry flag separately these are the inputs provided a0 b0 a1 b1 a2 b2 always you need to be starting it from right hand side all the blocks try start to draw it and this is the Verilog structural uh, description for ripple 3 bit ripple carry adder this is the simple code for that so please note it down okay using the Verilog structural description they have asked it because so since they have asked structural description we need to be declaring the values of uh, uh, full adder, first full adder, second full adder, third full adder and separately all the sum and carry bits you need to be mentioning it okay and we need to be declaring the end module okay so this is the simple code related to Verilog code related to structural description of 3 bit ripple carry adder so please note this down this is very very important okay so that's all from this subject Verilog I have tried to discuss some of the important concepts so what and all I have told in the video uh, study it thoroughly okay so hope this video is you would be useful for you guys and you would be able to clear the backlogs okay so please uh, do attempt your best to clear your backlogs because if you carry the backlogs and go to the next sim it would be a burden for you only okay so yeah try to clear the backlogs whatever the important concepts are there try to brush it up and learn it okay so all the best for all the backlog students from my side so thank you